Welcome to All Pro Football Data. My name is Jim Coburn, and today's episode, talking about Brock Purdy. What's the deal with Brock Purdy in terms of his draft profile? Should the 49ers move on? Should they keep him? What does he look like in the future? These are all questions that we're going to look at. So we're going to look at his pre-draft profile, his post-draft profile, which is going to include some statistics on him. And we're kind of going to get a bit of determination. You know, should the 49ers stay with Brock Purdy? Should they move on from him? These are things that we're going to look at in today's show. So first off, let's start with the mobile quarterback score. Uh, this is a raw statistic that's transformed into uh, a market share score which is then saved in the system, and then it's compared to positional peers to test out offensive market share, touchdown market share, touchdown percentage, and average yards per touch. All those scores are, are done, added together, and then ranked to give you the mobile quarterback score. It's essentially a relative mobile score. How much did this quarterback get involved in the rushing game or the running game is essentially what the score does. And when you look at it, he was a relatively mobile quarterback. Uh, he had uh, easily in the 70 percentile in terms of his uh, his uh, total mobile quarterback score. Uh, and then, of course, when you look at the other scores he had, the only thing that was kind of low or average was his TD percentage. But these numbers are solid. This, is, of course, is out of 1,276 quarterbacks since the 1956 NFL draft class. So based on his mobility... He is good. I mean, is he amazing? No, but he's he's good. Uh, moving on to the quarterback score. This score takes a look at his passing efficiency. So it takes a look at things like the touchdown to interception ratio, completion percentage. It does this on a 10-year sample so that we're comparing him based on his positional peers in the era in which he played. It takes a look at his strength of schedule and his strength of team score to give context, you know, how great was his passing efficiency for the team that he was on and for the schedule that he faced? And also, you might also look at age. Uh, taking a look at all these factors uh, for the quarterback score, you get these scores right here. Uh, Purdy had an 87 percentile best quarterback score, and he had an 81.58 average career quarterback score. So his efficiency was in the 80 percentile for the most part, with a high of the 87. Uh, when you look at the all-pro thresholds, the uh, the bottom in best quarterback score, excluding outliers, is 87 percentile. So he hit the all-pro threshold, but he did not hit the average. Uh, he hit closer to the Pro Bowl average than the all-pro average in terms of the um, uh, career quarterback efficiency score. This data, by the way, is out of 5,359 college football quarterback performances. So an even larger sample for this particular statistic. But he tested like a Pro Bowl quarterback. And um, moving to his athleticism testing, um, this, of course, looks at things like uh, the agility score, the speed score, the explosive lower body strength score. Uh, takes a look at, you know, how explosive they are, how fast they are for their size, and, of course, how much agility they have for their size, or at least flexibility for their size. Uh, and when you look at this particular score, um, he was, yeah, you know, average to below average. So he was not that athletic of a quarterback. Uh, I would say average uh, for the most part. Uh, starter averages, typically starters are about, you know, they're usually above average athletic. Uh, Purdy wasn't that. This is one of the reasons why I think a lot of teams didn't really want to have anything to do with him because he was just not that athletic, at least not like a super athlete. Uh, when you go to his particular draft class in which he came out, so this is all the quarterbacks in that draft class, he tested as the best mobile quarterback based on his mobile EAV or expected approximate value score. Uh, Sam Howell had a higher passing EAV or passing expected approximate value score, but pretty technically should have been the top quarterback in that particular draft class, at least one of the top quarterbacks in a particular draft class, based on his overall data in that draft class. So there was no reason that he should have been Mr. Irrelevant uh, at all based on his statistics. So isn't that something, right? But what does that mean, though? So to be in the 80 percentile, you know, kind of what does that mean? We'll get to that a little bit later. But that is definitely something to kind of hold on and come back to because, 
okay, he was the best quarterback or one of the best quarterbacks out of that draft class. But what does that mean in the context of decades worth of data, which is what we're going to get to. But moving on to the next part. So this is his pre-draft profile. So without looking at what he became at the NFL, uh, he tested like the best mobile quarterback based on his data, second by, second best behind uh, pocket quarterback uh, in Sam Howell. Um, he was an average athlete with a slim frame that discouraged many NFL scouts. However, he profiled as a starter of the Pro Bowl caliber prospect based on the numbers that actually matter. Production matters, guys. Uh, size, I mean, look at Drew Brees. Drew Brees was a 90 plus percentile um, you know, player based on his statistics coming out. Everybody talked about how short he was. And look at what he became. Um, Steve Young. I mean, the list goes on. There, there's so many quarterbacks where you don't look at their production. You just look at the size thing and you kind of just discard them without actually giving them a chance. So I think for the most part, when you look at his pre-draft profile, even if you didn't like his size, he still should have been like a day two, day three pick, guys. So, again, I think um, you know a lot of people are kind of talking about, you know, he's like an underdog and this or that. In reality, he was an inevitability. He inevitably, based on his data, should have been the top quarterback and ended up being the top quarterback, or at least one of the top quarterbacks out of a particular draft class. So he was inevitable, as they say. So moving to his actual NFL production. So the statistics that you're looking at right here, it, it takes a look at NFL quarterback performances. Um, and the statistics we're looking at are based on a 10-year sample for each score. So I'm not comparing Brock Purdy's statistics to Dan Marino's statistics in 1984, but I'm comparing the relative statistics of Dan Marino in his era compared to the relative statistics of Brock Purdy. That's what I'm doing. And based on how he performed in 2022, he performed pretty well for a man his age at 23. You know, uh, and th now this is a limited sample size, though. Keep in mind, he didn't play 17 games, but if he did play 17 games... These are the quarterbacks that he would have tested with based on his production data. Guys like Dan Marino, Dante Culpepper, Patrick Mahomes, Ben Roethlisberger, Dak Prescott, Deshaun Watson, Peyton Manning, Bailey Zapp of Patriots fam, Matthew Stafford, uh, Milt Plum, Jared Goff, Bernie Kozar, Matt Ryan, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, Billy Kilmer, Trevor Lawrence, and you know the list kind of goes on from there. Um, but he did a pretty had pretty good statistical performance back in 2022 in limited action. So they said, all right, um, our quarterbacks are a little iffy. So let's let's do it. Let's go with Purdy. You know, let's go with Brock. Let's let Brock take the reins, right? So they let him take the reins. And this is how he performed in 2023. Out of every single quarterback that was 24 years old, his overall statistical profile was probably the second best Quarterback, based on his overall statistics, uh, at age 24, out of every single 24-year-old quarterback performance in the NFL since 1948. That's pretty impressive, guys. Um, he was that good. Um, now, in terms of his touchdown-to-interception ratio, though, that was the biggest thing that was kind of a question mark with him. Is uh, He was more in line with guys like Colin Murray, Jerry Goff, in terms of his TD-to-interception ratio. But this is kind of what you're looking at with Purdy. And as you can clearly see, there's elite quarterbacks in here with uh, some questionable players uh, like Nick Foles and Neil you know, Lomax and you know some other guys here and there. But this kind of gives you an idea of what his profile kind of looks like in terms of comparing the actual NFL quarterback performances on the macro level. But what did he do in the micro level? That's what we're going to look at next with his NFL quarterback accuracy. So this is a statistic that's reported by Pro Football Reference. Um, the sample size for this is smaller because these statistics haven't really been out that long. Um, and it's since 2019 out of 192 NFL quarterback performances. It looks at bad throw percentage, on target percentage, and also looks at batted throw percentage. Now... When people look at pretty statistics, when you go back to those statistics that you just saw, they go, dang, he was elite. He should have been the MVP based on his statistics. 
People just don't quite like Brock Purdy. Why? Why don't they like him? Why don't they like you, Brock? Well, when you look at his NFL quarterback accuracy, he had a 52 percentile bad throw percentage, which is average. On target percentage was 50 percentile, which is average. And his batted throw percentage was in the 23 percentile. So he had a relatively high batted throw percentage in terms of how many throws he had and how many of them were batted. It's kind of high. Um, and I think most people that have watched Brock Purdy on film know that he can be pretty inconsistent at times. He'll he'll have a, a stretch where he just has a lot of really bad throws, you know, throws that are just way outside the numbers. Uh, and then he'll get adjusted a little bit in the second half, and then he's laser, he's, he's lights out. That was the biggest thing with Brock Purdy, is it was like a dichotomy between being really lasered in focus with amazing throws and then bad throws. So there was a lot of bad with a lot of good based on his NFL quarterback accuracy data uh, that he had. So that is the one thing I think you can say about Purdy is that he has that concern going for him. Um, moving on to the last part before we get to the actual outlook for him, uh, post-draft outlook. Uh, look at the quarterbacks who tested similar to him. So again, remember what I told you about being in the 80 percentile of the mobile quarterback score. What does that mean? Well, in the historical context, this is a general sample of quarterbacks who tested with the same mobile quarterback EAV score, expected approximate value score, and then a similar range in terms of you know their ability to be mobile. Uh, not to say that Brock Purdy is like a elite mobile quarterback, but he is mobile. He is, does have the ability to make plays with his legs, uh, if you will. Uh, so when you look at the quarterbacks who tested similar to him in this kind of area, you have some question marks here. You know, guys like Cordell Stewart, Trent Dilfer, uh, Bobby Douglas, Rick Meyer, uh, Jeff Blake, Archie Manning, um, Andrew Luck, Mark Malone, Donovan McNabb, uh, Josh Freeman, there's not a whole lot of Hall of Famers here. I know some of you guys might want to put Andrew Luck in the Hall of Fame, but he didn't play long enough to do it. And uh, he also had inconsistent play as well. But the bottom line is this. I think when you look at the quarterbacks who tested with him based on his pre-draft profile, he looks like he's good but not great. It's really what he looks like based on his uh, statistics. So that's the biggest question question mark guys in terms of his data is he's kind of good but not great you know not elite not elite and that's the biggest thing that everybody's been hating on him about is that he's not elite he's not this elite quarterback he's not an all-pro quarterback but even based on his pre-draft profile he didn't test like an all-pro quarterback you know he didn't hit the, the the numbers that he needed to hit for that so that is kind of what you're looking at in terms of his post-draft outlook um, I think the criticisms of Purdy on film, based on the analysts and based on how people who actually watch him, are warranted. I think he was inconsistent in terms of his on-target throws. He was inconsistent in terms of his um, uh, bad throw percentage, you know, making bad throws. He was inconsistent in terms of his bad throw percentage. So these are things that I think do need to be assessed in the future for him. But... I still think you need to at least have one more year to evaluate Brock Purdy. I think you can make the argument that you could just pull up shop and just end everything right now. And, and I, I totally understand why you would want to do that. Um, you know, he, he definitely was inconsistent as a quarterback and he did have a lot of talent around him. And a lot of that talent may have been the biggest thing that kind of helped elevate him to what he was. But I think before you just throw him out, throw him to the wolves, keep him for one more year, see what he does, see if he can improve those numbers, if he can improve his on-target percentage, if he can improve uh, his uh, bad throw percentage, if he can improve those things. Because, again, he's still young. I mean, the guy is still under 25 years old. So there's still development there with him that I think can be unlocked. So I think that's what you're looking at with Brock Purdy. I think you're looking at a quarterback who's more so on the Pro Bowl side, maybe not, more like a 
elevated Andy Dalton, I guess is the best way to put it. You know, a quarterback who is good, but not great. Um, I'm trying to think of some other quarterbacks that are like Kirk Cousins, for example, would be like another example. You know, a quarterback that can, with the pieces around him, can get the job done. He's going to win you football games. You put the right team around him, he can win games. And they were dang near close to winning the Super Bowl, guys, uh, if it wasn't for some shenanigans here and there. But that is the outlook for Brock Purdy. I think if you can, can you win a Super Bowl with him? Absolutely. We saw in the Super Bowl, with as tight as it was, they had a chance, they had a shot to win that thing. Even though they didn't do it, they had an opportunity to. You know, they were they they were right there. And then they just kind of let it go away. So that is Brock Purdy based on his outlook as a prospect for the future. I think you have to give him one more year. I think after that year, you see if his accuracy numbers improve. If they do improve, I think you should, you know, give him the job for the future. If they stay the same or get worse, then you might want to start looking for another quarterback. But before then, don't throw away the good that he has done because he was a good quarterback. He was probably the best quarterback out of that draft class, especially now in hindsight, uh, based on his uh, data uh, as a mobile quarterback. So these are things you have to kind of consider and take into account with him. So overall, that is the profile on him. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Jim Coburn. You can check me out at Jimmetrics on X, formerly known as Twitter. Also check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash jcoburn. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace!